I got asked a massive question in the comments recently asking me if I had to pick one limiting factor of endurance performance based on the science, based on all the different elements that go into it, what would I choose as the most important limiting factor to work on to be able to unlock a little bit more of your performance? So in this video, I'm gonna break it down. It's not as simple as answering that question just straight out. There is a bit more complexity to it, but hopefully I can guide you on what my thought, thought process is. And I thought it was a really interesting question. So without any further ado, let's get into it. To the channel nick here making sports science simple and in this one an unbelievably huge question i got asked in the comments fantastic question that came through and i love the questions that you put uh, at the bottom of the videos asking further further insights about the topic we're talking about in the video but also asking some other things if you've got any particular questions or thoughts that you want to get out leave them in the comments down below always happy to hear them even if they're slightly uh, unrelated to the video if it's still something in the realm of sports science and endurance I'm always gonna try and get back and respond and give you my response, but also it can turn into a video like this, which can help a bunch of other people see that as well, but also give a little bit more detail to my answers because it's very difficult sometimes to get as many, um, get as much detail into the comment section as I can. So sometimes it's just easier for me to jump on and do a video. And that's what I'm doing here with this huge question. Like I said in the introduction, I got asked, what is the one scientific element or factor that limits endurance performance that I think is, pro is the most important or that we should emphasize the most? And so I had a bit of a think about it and I think it definitely changes in a bunch of contexts. That was my first, I guess, response to it. And I don't want to sound cliche in terms of, oh, it depends because that gets thrown around uh, probably way too much in, in the sports science space. I think quite rightly in terms of, yes, it does depend on the context. If we're talking marathon running, well, the limiting factors are very different to a 1500 meter runner. If we're talking long course triathlete, Ironman triathlete, well, that's very different to a sprint distance triathlon. Those... Those components, there might be some similarities, but given the nature of the event and, and how broad endurance performance is in general, it's really difficult to pinpoint necessarily one factor if we're looking at everything. But if I think of what probably has the most commonality across all of those, without a doubt, it has to be, in my eyes anyway, it has to be your output at VO2 max. That is, that is probably the biggest thing that I've seen in lab testing over the last few years, uh, working in the industry, seeing hundreds, if not thousands of, of sets of data, looking at the top end age groupers versus uh, the next tier, looking at elite versus amateur. All of this information has sort of led me to your output at VO2 max is probably one of the most critical things that dictates the rest of your performance or maybe even limits your performance. And the reason I say that is because I'll give the really simple um, outcome of, we talked about this on, on a recent podcast episode I do with, uh, with my work. It's called the Physiology Secrets Podcast. If you haven't checked it out, I might put the link down in the description below. Go check out the episodes. We just, we just talk pretty casually and keep it really simple, similar to what we do on this channel. But we talked a little while ago about what the difference between an A-grade and a B-grade cyclist would be in terms of amateur racing. A-grade being the top tier, B-grade being the next one down. How What what makes an A-grade racer? And if you take out tactics, you take out all those smart race smarts, so to speak, because that does play a bit of a factor. And we just looked at pure physiology. Really, the difference majority of the time is that the A-grade rider just has a bigger output at VO2 max. And what I mean by that is it's, let's use a couple of numbers here. Let's say athlete A is our A-grade racer and athlete B is our B-grade racer. Our A-grade racer, let's say has a VO, regardless of what their oxygen consumption is, I might actually scrap that. We're not even talking about how much oxygen they can use. We're more talking about what was their power at VO2 max. Or if you're a runner, what was your velocity at VO2 max? That's the, probably the more important metric. And let's see, let's say for example, our A grade racer VO2 max is at 360 watts. Right? They get to the end, their end of the test. That's where their VO2 max is 360, which might give them, let's say, an FTP of 300. There's some pretty common numbers to see, um, maybe in some amateur circumstances. These are example. They're not exact, and I'm not picking on particular athletes here, but I'm just sort of throwing it out there. If we then compare that to what a B grade, typical B grade race would look like, well, typically what we might see is their VO2 max might be 300 or 330 which would commonly leave them an FTP of say 240, 270, maybe a bit higher, depending on how they've trained. The key limiting factor there is that our B grade racer cannot have an FTP of 300 if their VO2 max was 300 or their VO2 max was 330. It's just far too close. You, you can't have an FTP or that theoretical 45 to an hour intensity be the same as your realistically five, five to maybe seven minute time trial intensity, which is VO2 max. Those have to be separated by some sort of uh, amount in terms of your physiology. Usually, 
most people can get their FTP to about 90, 95%. That would be the absolute upper limit of VO2 max. You can't get it to 100% because you can't hold VO2 max for 45 minutes. So it, it's the type of thing that that's the biggest difference. We could have two athletes who have exactly the same. They might have VO2 max of say 75 mils per kilo per minute, really good oxygen consumption. Might not even be as high as that. But the ones who can translate that oxygen consumption to a much higher output are gonna be the ones who are in those higher grades or outperform a little bit better. And the same goes for runners, the same goes for triathletes all across the board. Whoever can output the most at VO2 max probably has a better physiological chance of having a much higher velocity of threshold or power at threshold, which we know is an absolute must and in terms of a big key performance indicator in endurance performance. Velocity at lactate threshold, so how fast you're going at threshold, is arguably one of the biggest predictors of performance out there and, and ultimately one of the biggest limiters as well. If we can increase that, great but we can only increase that as long as our VO2 is big enough to allow it. Like I said, you can't have an FTP of 300 and a VO2 max of 300, it doesn't work. VO2 max has to be significantly above. So if I'm picking one limiting factor in performance, for majority of people, particularly in the amateur setting, it's your output at your VO2 max. I don't even necessarily care too much, particularly for runners. If you've got really good running economy, someone like Kipchoge doesn't have a massive actual VO2. He can just run really, really fast at his, at his top end output. Um, so, so that's where it's like his actual oxygen consumption doesn't really matter. He's got fantastic running economy. Let, let's capitalize on the fact that he can go fast and he doesn't have to work as hard. So the, the actual milliliters of oxygen component, I'm not as fussed about. It's more about, well, what can you actually output? What is that practical external um, translation of all of the physiology going into it? What am I getting as a, as a result? I'm, I'm not too fussed about the input. It's, well, what is the output and how sustainable is that output? Because that's ultimately what's going to dictate performance. I mean, at the end of the day, if we come back to our example of A versus B grade, if you've got someone who's got a, an FTP of 30 watts higher, well, if you're sitting back in the bunch or you're cruising along during a race in the easy parts, if we all drop back to a, a lower intensity, well, that person who had a much higher VO2 and a much higher uh, FTP, if they drop back to say 240 watts, athlete B might still be working a bit tempo, sort of sweet spot, working reasonably hard or like keeping up and, and pushing along. Athlete A is cruising. It's a much lower percentage of their max. So this is where if we boost everything up, the other benefit is when you drop the intensity and you're sitting in on a, on a more comfortable pace, you're now working at a much lower percentage of your engine, which gives you one of two options. It allows you either go harder and use a slightly higher percentage of your engine, which is gonna make you go faster and ultimately separate you from the rest of the field. Or you can sit at that, that much reduced pace for a significantly longer period of time. So if we're talking about ultra distance races or long course, Ironman, for example, if you're able to sit back on a slightly reduced, or the same intensity, but now it's a lesser percentage of your engine, you're gonna be able to do that for longer. So you may not actually need to produce more power across 180 Ks of a bike leg in an Ironman. It just makes sense that if I can sustain the pace for longer, it's gonna give me a better output. So this is where it's, it's, all about, it's all about increasing the general size of the engine, but from a perspective of what is the output as a result of that. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an insight. It's a huge question. It, it, like I said at the beginning, it's not as simplistic as this and it never will be. Endurance performance has so many compounding factors and complex factors that go into it. But if I was to pick probably the most common factor that I see, particularly in amateurs and even up to the elite level as well, that really separates the good from, from the rest or the elite from the rest, even if we are talking about amateurs, first versus 10th even in some of those races, it would have to be your output at VO2 max without without shadow of doubt because it dictates the rest of your engine. If you have a really big high VO2 max in terms of output, it's going to allow you to have a higher FTP or higher threshold, which is our key performance indicator. So hopefully you get a bit of an insight into my thought process there. Let me know down below, do you have any thoughts about what is maybe a limiting factor you think in your endurance performance or what is the limiting factor you're experiencing at the moment? I know a lot of people are starting to come out, lockdowns again, get back into racing. What are you finding is the biggest limiter to your performance at the moment? Leave a comment down below, always happy to hear it and happy to hear your questions around some of these topics as well. They might turn into a video like we've done here. So hopefully you got a bit out of this one. We're gonna leave it there for today and we'll see you in the next one.